Hello and welcome, I'm Fernando, a GP in the UK. Today, we're going to do an up-to-date review of the section on exacerbations in the NICE guideline on COPD in adults, and also the NICE guideline on antimicrobial prescribing for acute exacerbations of COPD, always focusing on what is relevant in primary care only. If you wish to know about COPD diagnosis and stable COPD management, please see the corresponding episodes on this channel. The links are in the episode description. Right, so let's jump into it. The first thing to do in general practice is to determine whether there is a need for hospital treatment or whether the patient can be treated at home. NICE has produced a table including the factors to consider when deciding whether to treat the patient in hospital or in the community. The majority of these factors are straightforward and logical basically sending to hospital those patients who are more symptomatic, unable to cope at home, frail, etc. So I will not labour those points because you can use your clinical judgement when assessing the patient's symptoms. In terms of examination findings, we will also use our clinical judgement and we will consider sending patients to hospital if they have cyanosis, worsening peripheral edema, or a saturation of oxygen less than 90%. The diagnosis of an exacerbation is made clinically and does not depend on the results of investigations. However, investigations may sometimes be useful in ensuring appropriate treatment. More investigations are recommended for people treated in hospital who tend to have more severe exacerbations than for people in the community. For people who have their exacerbation managed in primary care, Sputum culture is not routinely recommended, but pulse oximetry is of value if there are clinical features of a severe exacerbation. Increased breathlessness is a common feature of exacerbations, which is usually managed by taking increased doses of short-acting bronchodilators. Both nebulizers and handheld inhalers can be used during exacerbations, depending on clinical factors. For those admitted to hospital, switching them to handheld inhalers as soon as their condition has stabilised is recommended, because this may allow them to be discharged from hospital earlier. In the absence of significant contraindications, we will consider oral steroids in the community for exacerbations with a significant increase in breathlessness. We will offer 30 mg oral prednisolone daily for five days, referring to the BNF guidance as to how to stop it. We will think about osteoporosis prophylaxis for people who need frequent courses of oral steroids. For guidance on using antibiotics to treat COPD exacerbations, we will look at its own separate guideline, that is, the NICE guideline on antimicrobial prescribing for acute exacerbations of COPD, or NG114. We will start by saying that a range of factors, including viral infections and smoking, can trigger an exacerbation, and that many exacerbations are not caused by bacterial infections, so they will not respond to antibiotics. However, some people at risk of exacerbations may have antibiotics to keep at home as part of their exacerbation action plan. Before giving antibiotics, we will take into account the severity of symptoms and whether they may need to go into hospital, previous exacerbation and hospital admission history and the risk of developing complications, previous sputum cultures and the risk of resistance with repeated courses of antibiotics. If an antibiotic is given, we will advise that symptoms may not be fully resolved when the antibiotic course has been completed. Regardless of whether we give antibiotics or not, we will advise patients to seek further medical advice if symptoms worsen, do not start to improve within an agreed period of time, or the patient becomes unwell. In these cases, we will consider other possible diagnoses, such as pneumonia, cardiorespiratory failure or sepsis, and we will also consider antibiotic resistance, and we will send a sputum culture if symptoms have not improved following a course of antibiotics. We will refer for specialist advice and consideration of intravenous antibiotics if symptoms are not improving with repeated courses of oral antibiotics, there are bacteria that are resistant to oral antibiotics, 
or the patient cannot take oral medicines. When prescribing an antibiotic for an acute exacerbation of COPD, we will follow the following recommendations. The first line oral antibiotics are amoxicillin 500 mg three times a day for five days or an increased dose in severe infections. Doxycycline 200 mg on the first day, then 100 mg once a day for five days or an increased dose of 200 mg daily in severe infections or clarithromycin 500 mg twice a day for five days. We will consider second line oral antibiotics if there is no improvement in symptoms on the first choice taken for at least two or three days, guided by sputum cultures when available. In that case, we will use an alternative first line antibiotic. An alternative choice oral antibiotics for patients at higher risk of treatment failure would be Comoxiclav 500 125 mg three times a day for five days. Cotrimoxazole 960 mg twice daily for five days. Levofloxacin 500 mg once a day for five days, but we will offer these with specialist advice if comoxiclav or cotrimoxazole cannot be used and after considering safety issues. Further general treatment considerations are as follows. We will check the BNA for appropriate use and dosing in specific populations, for example in hepatic or renal impairment. If a person is having antibiotic prophylaxis, acute treatment should be with an antibiotic from a different class. People who may be at higher risk of treatment failure include people who have had repeated courses of antibiotics, a previous or current sputum culture showing resistant bacteria, or people at higher risk of developing complications. Cotrimoxazole should only be considered for use in acute exacerbations of COPD when there is bacteriological evidence of sensitivity. We will also follow the MHRA advice for restrictions and precautions for using fluoroquinolone antibiotics due to very rare reports of disabling and potentially long-lasting or irreversible side effects affecting musculoskeletal and nervous systems. Warnings include stopping treatment at first signs of a serious adverse reaction, such as tendonitis, prescribing with special caution in people over 60 years of age, and avoiding co-administration with a corticosteroid. And finally, we will consider physiotherapy using positive expiratory pressure devices for selected people with exacerbations of COPD to help with clearing sputum. We have come to the end of this episode. Remember that this is not medical advice and it is only my summary and my interpretation of the guidelines. You must always use your clinical judgment. Thank you for watching and goodbye.